MRN Crew Call on MRN.com is presented by Money Lion, the world's most powerful financial membership. Money Lion, here we roar. And also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. MRN Crew Call presented by Money Lion. I'm your host, Rocco Williams, and I'm joined today by Brad Robinson and Cameron Cobb from Roush Fenway Racing. Thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy days. I'm sure you're prepping for Talladega to join us today. Thank you for having us. I'm telling you what, man, we got a lot of youngsters looking at this show. A lot of young athletes, you know, aspiring pit crew, over the wall pit crew starters. They know you guys. I know of you guys pretty well. You know, you lay your hands on a lot of young athletes but before we get into that you know we're coming back from Dover it was a great day in Dover I mean from my vantage point watching it from the TV you know it looked pretty nice out there you know in a nutshell Brad you represent the number 17 car as their jack man Ricky Stenhouse is your driver I mean in a nutshell how was your day overall at Dover uh it was pretty decent I mean uh Dover's a fun place to to do pit stops at and um and we had an all right day. had had some adjustments that we had to make early. Uh, had a couple opportunities to do some clean pit stops. We did okay. There's always ways that we could improve. We looked at that at the beginning of the week, but mm-hmm. uh, but it was a fun day. It was good good weather, like you said earlier. It didn't rain, so it's always a good day in Dover when it doesn't rain. <laughs> I joke with that because it seems like every year when you go there in the mornings, you cross that bridge. You know, it's just you see it coming. It rained out in the spring. <laughs> exactly. You know. So, um, Cameron. What's your role, your official title at uh, Roush Fenway Racing? Um, I'm on the, I don't know what my official title is, but uh, I'm Besides on Besides the... OG GOAT. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, right. there's levels uh, to this OG and this young athletes. And Cam Cobb, this is not his first time around the, 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 the uh, racetrack, I should say, huh? No, I've been, uh, I've been there for a while. <laughs> but uh, I'm uh, on the, the pit crew coaching staff. Um, you know, we have, uh, there's, actually four of us on the, the on the coaching staff so um, I take care of uh, facilitating and and uh, figuring out practices and mm-hmm. and uh, talking to the crew chiefs t- to figure out what's going to be in play for the following week and then uh, add that into my practice schedules and what about you Brad do you are you involved in the coaching as well so um, <laughs> I help Ooh, out with the, with the uh, recruiting and development side uh, I've been doing it for about 10 years now and uh, we got anywhere between 20 and 30 guys that come mm-hmm. and practice with us during the week. You know, we, we practice in the mornings, first thing in the morning. And, uh, and it's just it, it's a good opportunity for these young athletes to come in, show their skills. Um, and, and we teach them a lot of things, not only about pit stops, but just how to be good people, good workers, mm-hmm. um, and, and just uh, team players. See, now your voice matches your big burly uh, presence there. (laughs) He came right on in. (laughs) Anyways, you know, so with the season almost over, well, it's not almost over. We're in the second round of the playoffs, so it's nearing an end. You know, um, I wanted to know, were there any individual goals that y'all had as a team with the 17 um, that y'all wanted to meet? And have y'all met those goals? And just in general, how how are y'all feeling with where y'all are right now? Uh, we feel pretty good about where we're at as a team, as a pit crew. And that's uh, what I mean. Specifically as, we, a, as a pit crew. Yeah, because we don't talk about drivers on here. We, we don't well, really care. It, it's you know, all about us. Overall, we want to do well. We want to finish well, obviously. Mm-hmm. But the, the things that we can control as a pit crew is what happens inside the pit stall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and our goals at the beginning of the year were to just be consistent. You know, mm-hmm. kill people with consistency. We, uh, we have speed for sure. Um, but sometimes when you're, when you're going and doing races and all you're trying to do is be fast, that's when you make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So if you can back it down just a little bit and and just be consistent and allow the other teams to make mistakes, um, we're just trying to maintain wherever we're at, wherever we're running, uh, make our adjustments where we need to make them and just be consistent as possible. And we, I think overall this year, we've done a really good job at that. I I agree with you 100%. And Cameron, when I have you on here, I wanted to remind everyone here that I've watched this man, Jack, you know, for years. I mean, freshman, sophomore, junior years, and uh, I'm just looking, like, how can I get better? You know, you you look to the veterans and watch what they do, but at the same time, when you watch the veterans, you know, we're all built differently. You know, our bodies aren't aren't the same or whatever, and they just got to a point where I, I had to come to grips with the fact that I won't be able to jack a race car the way Cameron jacks the race car. 
<laughs> yeah, and I had to come to uh, to grips that uh, I was getting too old to jack a race car. Um, kind of glad I got out when I did. Uh, Why do you say that? When did you get out, actually? When did you start and when did you get out, Cameron? Um, I started in 2000 um, with uh, Petty's and then uh, went to Roush in 2004. And then uh, and my, there, ever since. Yep, my uh, last year as a Jackman was 2015 with Ricky. Um, and then I took a year off uh, from the pit crew side and worked in the shop and then came back coaching in 2017. So basically you got upset that you weren't pitting anymore. You, you, you went through a funk because I'm, I'm talking about me. No, <laughs> no, when I stopped, it was I, hard uh, for that first year. And then I, I got the itch again. I made the decision to to retire on my own, good, because um, I wanted to go out while I still was mm-hmm. not decent. forced out. Yeah, I didn't want to be forced out. I didn't want to be told I was too old. That guy hanging slow. around, yeah. just taking up paychecks, yeah. you know, so. missing practice. <laughs> and, and plus, now with the going to five man, mm. my body build isn't uh, a tire carrier jack man body build like Brad mm-hmm. over here. <laughs> um, you don't see the tall, lanky Jack man like you used to. Um, so that was another plus. Yep. Um, and you know, I, I missed the, the, uh, that first year I missed the competitive side of it, but I didn't miss the, the pit stop side. And now I get the, the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. You know, I can, I can jack a race car vicariously through Brad or, you know, I have, four or five practices a day where I'm teaching guys how to, to jack a race car and carry and change and all that. So I get the best of both worlds now. And then that's awesome because, like I said, I alluded, that to, uh, alluded to the fact earlier that you guys put your hands on a lot of athletes throughout the day, you know, throughout the course of a week, you know. And I want to talk about that, and uh, we will. We'll delve into that a little bit more of what that process is like and how do you choose these athletes and who do you decide – who comes and who doesn't and who moves up and who doesn't and what have you. And sit tight. We'll be right back with Brad and Cameron, and we're going to delve into more of this R&D and recruiting stuff that they're getting into. Want the keys to a custom-built Mustang GT? You could win one of three custom-built Mustangs designed by three world-class build teams paired with three NASCAR drivers. Joey Logano, Austin Sindrick, and Ryan Blaney. Enter before October 20th at midnight. Just text ROAR to 95615. That's ROAR to 95615. Or visit roarsweepstakes.moneylion.com and triple your chances by joining Money Lion today. No purchase necessary. Ends 10 Must be 18 or older. For official rules, visit roarsweepstakes.moneylion.com. Clutch Coffee Bar in Mooresville, North Carolina is redefining the drive through coffee game in Race City, USA. The Clutch experience is fast, friendly, and delicious. Quality drinks and unmatched customer service is the name of the game. Clutch Coffee Bar offers signature lattes and mochas, custom flavor-infused energy drinks, smoothies, and more. Over 25 flavors, there's something for everyone. Visit our two locations in Mooresville, 356 Williamson Road and 154 West Plaza Drive. Open daily from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Power up today with Clutch Coffee Bar. It wasn't just built to be a museum. It was built to be a shrine to the history, heritage, and future of the sport we love. Visit the NASCAR Hall of Fame and see how Petty, Earnhardt, and hundreds of other NASCAR legends became heroes. Watch their most electrifying moments, experience realistic racing simulators, and much more. Plan a trip to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. Tickets at NASCARHall.com. NASCAR Hall of Fame. This is our sport. This is our house. We're back with MRN Crew Call, just as promised. Brad and Cameron Cobb are in the studio today. And all of our young pit crew athletes, here is our Money our money Lion Financial Crew Chief segment of the show. And here's what we like to focus on, occupations and what us athletes like to do after we're done pitting cars. And, you know, Cameron, with you as a mechanic by trade, you know, you were already infused into that game before you started pitting cars, right? What was your specific duties um, in the shop as a mechanic? I, I've done a little bit of everything in the shop, uh, but for the most part, I was on the assembly side or the fabrication side. Um, then I went into the uh, the liquids department, which was oil tanks, fuel cells, radiators. Uh, That's what they call on that, down the, the line. liquids department. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had a nickname for it. Um, <laughs> we called ourselves the liquid lizards. Uh, there was three of us that worked in there. So. Who? Uh, Brad Sutton, uh, Mike Brown, yeah. uh, and Russ Strupp. 
Uh, so it was all the old washed up or well. Man, those I don't are names we haven't up, heard in a long time. We're gonna do yeah. a where are they now episode. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck finding all of them. But they're probably on twelve or thirteen acres somewhere, you know, and hiding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Brad, right? That's what you're gonna do. Who's the wood chopper here? Who's the wood chopper? I don't know, man. I, I saw something on Facebook. I don't know, if it was yours or Brad's and they were selling wood by the by the, the cart. Is that you? <laughs> I think both of us do do kind of the wood thing. What are y'all doing, uh, man? I'm a city boy, man. Put me on game. (laughs) Well, you're you're talking about. You wouldn't get it then. (laughs) (laughs) No. No. All I saw was on Facebook. I saw a post. uh, Yeah, just just pay the money and we'll come bring you the firewood. (laughs) Make it it easier. Is that in the wind? How do you cut it? Who cuts it? Y'all got a machine to do it? No, it's called a chainsaw, man. And you do it yourself? We we. Uh, see, all right, I'm dabbling. Send me a video. <laughs> see, see, I'm telling we'll on myself. Later. Th- this is the <laughs> this is the part you're talking about. What we do outside. I know. I'm That's learning here. This part. is why I'm asking. I, I'm learning because you know it's a hustle. You know, and, oh, and there's this. money to be made. You know, so I'm just trying to make as much as possible. You know, so um, th- so that's one side hustle, right? <laughs> Any anything else y'all have going on besides the fact that doesn't involve pit stops? There's got to be something, I'll, Brad. Come I'll on, let, you got that I'll look. Let Brad, take this. One. <laughs> Come on, Brad. <laughs> Uh, I think Cameron, uh, Cameron and I have been friends for a long time now. And, uh, you know, him and I, we actually live close to each other out I in the got, country, stuff I got like the that. So, yeah, I got this. So, uh, yeah, we get into some, some side stuff. Yeah. What yeah. is that? That's, that's just a pile of firewood. So, so what, how does that, how much would that cost me? How much would that pile cost me? It said right on there 150 mm-hmm. bucks. 150 bucks. Yeah. So, how long did it take you to chop all that up? Well, it took our guys about. Two hours. So y'all don't even do it. You have a staff that does it. See, see, this is the hustle I need to know. See, y'all smile too much around the track, so that means you're making money outside of here. So I'm on to your game now, so I'm going to jump into this chainsawing wood thing. We'll talk after the show. (laughs) We'll teach you. I'll give give you a resume. Okay. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So besides that, okay, so um, explain to me what you do at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, or is it 6 in the mornings? every day who shows up what is that process and and what are you trying to accomplish um well tuesday wednesday and thursday from seven forty-five to 9 is our development practice um and before i hired brad we had a a, a small group of people that used to come in and when i got the opportunity to to um, to hire Brad back at Roush because he was uh, he was my gas man at one point in time, <laughs> and then he went on to uh, other race teams. Um, but when I hired him back, that was one of the things that that was uh, on top of my priority sheet was development program, and I knew Brad's development program at RCR was really really strong, and that's what I wanted to bring to the table at Roush because that's kind of how I worked my way up. Um, we really didn't have development programs back in then, but mm-hmm. You just picked up a jack and went about it. Uh, with between Brad, and myself, and and our other coaches um, at Roush, we have created a, a really really big development program, and and Brad pretty much runs that development side. Um, I'm there to help him with mm-hmm. it, and eyes and ears and and all that. But uh, I let Brad and his coaching style. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, run the development program. So how many guys do you see typically uh, on a Monday, a Monday, Tuesday morning? We don't do anything Monday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, there's anywhere between 20 and 30 guys um, that we'll mix up and practice. And, uh, <laughs> and, and really, I mean, the structure is it's, it's uh you know it's high demand. Is it first come first serve? How do you t- determine who gets matched up, who goes, or whatever the case may be? Uh, it's really about guys that show up consistently. Number one, I mean, you got to earn your way. Um, we don't we don't necessarily turn guys away. Uh, we get we get a lot of people that that reach out to us, whether it be at the track, over the phone, whatever. Um, Could I show up a, and get some reps? Sure, sure. Yeah, come on. Yeah, tomorrow morning. Bring your video camera. You damn right I am. <laughs> I'm serious. Do you serious. get up that early? Yeah, I'm a man. I have four kids, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> so anyway, so that's how we uh, that that's how we place guys is basically by you know where they're at in their development. We kind of keep guys together that are at the same stages, you know, as far as performance goes, and uh, you know we really uh, focus on the fundamentals of the game, which I think are, are really not that hard for most of these athletes. The fundamentals aren't. But we, but we really focus on the mental part of it, you know, the, the ability to be consistent 
um, you know, when when there is issues during a pit stop, you know, not compounding those mistakes, you know, trying to make up for for time and and uh, just just the discipline of of what it takes to be on a on a picture. That's awesome. And what are, what are the options for these athletes internally with 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 your with your race team? Do they have the option to to move up with your team, or are you putting them on other teams? How does that work? We uh, we're actually you know we we want to assign them uh, to Roush and keep them uh, under a development contract, and that is our way of moving up. You know, mm. we gotta have we gotta have people to in case of injuries. We gotta have uh, the new upcoming uh, people to take spots, like when I retire or when Brad ends up retiring or so on down the line. Um, and we don't want to just train them to send them off to another race team. Um, so we're kind of selfish on that front. You should be. Um, you know, if we're gonna put the time and effort in, then we want to see some return on that. That's awesome because. I I was totally uh, oblivious to what y'all were doing there, and it was our recruits at Diversity mm-hmm. who was coming back, telling us what they were going through. I was like, "Where were you at this morning?" You know, we were supposed mm-hmm. to know where they were. I we knew they were at Roush, but I didn't know how they were at Roush and right. what they were doing at Roush. And when they started mm-hmm. talking about, you know, the the system that they're a part of, you know, I was like, "Hey, did you get some reps today?" And they were like, "No, I didn't." I was like, "Well, why not?" You know, well, I kind of missed some days. Right. You know, so that's right on line with what you say. Those who are consistent are rewarded. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even upset that he didn't get reps. He knew from start. well, I missed some days and I wasn't doing everything I should be doing, so I wasn't surprised. Mm-hmm. And that's understandable. I really commend y'all on what y'all are doing there. And um, there's a lot of athletes out there, you know, looking to get on good race teams that really rely on what you're doing. And it's much appreciated across the sport, you know, so – Appreciate you guys doing that. Keep going on. We're going to come right back. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to talk more in depth about um, the Brad Rodex. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And I- At the Goddard School, teachers customize lessons so children can explore their interests, have fun, and learn the skills they need for success in school and beyond. From infant sign language to pre-K students tackling STEAM learning, our Flex Learning Program, or Fun Learning Experience, is grounded in research that shows the most genuine learning occurs when children are having fun. Our teachers leverage this through lessons inspired by children's imaginations. To enroll, visit GoddardSchool.com. The Goddard School, learning for fun, learning for life. Wheelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Sunday, October 27th at Martinsville Speedway. It's a fight to the finish. The first state of 500 returns to Martinsville, part of the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Get tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com or call 877-RACE-TIX. That's martinsvillespeedway.com or 877-R-A-C-E-T-I-X for the first state of 500. October 27th, it's a fight to the finish. Get In Schooled is presented by the Goddard School, the best childhood preparation for social and academic success. Visit GoddardSchool.com for more information. The Goddard School, learning for fun, learning for life. So the Goddard School has been very good to me, guys. You know, I told you I have four kids. They were all in daycare, you know. They're 13, 10, 9, and 5 now. So any kids for yourselves? Yeah, I got one uh, one son, 22 years old. Mm. And that's the picture I saw y'all were dressed alike at the Christmas tree? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, with the, with the four dogs. Yep. With the dogs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Brad? I got two little girls, five and two. And what you don't understand for all of our non-race fans, you know, we're on the road constantly. So, you know, we're away from our families a lot, you know, which could be good and bad. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one, a big believer of, hey, if your kids see you all the time, you know, they might be lazy. You know, I don't want them to see me all the time. They know I'm grinding and out there working, and that's one thing we can say for the both of y'all. Your kids pretty much know that y'all are some 
hardworking individuals chopping that wood and pitting cars, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to get schooled right now. And I'm next week on our next show, I'm exposing the three different variations of carrying. There's three different variations, and I'm going to show you all do video what those look like. Well, only two. Because the third variation, there's no way I can show you what that looks like because there's only one man alive in the world, in the world, who's capable of doing this. It's called the Brad Rodex, and I coined that name. I'm taking credit for that name when it goes viral, okay? But this carrying style, first of all, let me tell you the three types of carrying styles there are. There is the front stepper, there is the swinger, and there's the Brad Rodex, done by one man and all his minions who he teaches to do this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, so can I just show you guys what this looks like? And then, Brad, if you can kind of coach me through this, how do I do this? Brad Rodex that you're doing. When the car comes in, I see you grab the tire underhand with your right hand, and it's like you're just blindly, boom, going in. How do you do that, man? What, and what are you looking at? What are your reference points? How do you see anything and know what you're doing there? I don't get it. Explain to me, Brad. Please. I don't, I don't have really good explanation. No, that's for not going to really go. Don't. That's hey. not going to go. How did that come about? So when they did, when they went to the five man pit stop last year, number one, I was just a carrier, carried rear tires for a long time. Well, fronts and rears, but um, you know, so so then the option to Jack came into play when they went to the five man pit stop, and this way just made sense to me. I mean, I had messed around with it for years, watched Trent Cherry, um, and a couple other guys. Ooh. Sean Ward used to do it, right? Yeah. Um, yep. You know, a couple other guys used to do it back in the day, and 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 I'd always kind of messed around with it. And and when I was learning how to, or kind of reteaching myself how to jack, beginning last year when they changed the rule, you know, of course everybody's messed around with different ways, and it just made sense to me. I could really, um, you know, get to the tire faster. I could get to the actual indexing part faster, and trying to close that window down when the tire got pulled. Um, the spacing just worked out right. So just through a lot of trial and error. Uh, last off season, just repetition, you know what I mean? And it just made sense. And, and I try to teach other guys how to do it. And they're like, man, I just can't get it. And it's like, like you know, it's just one of those things, you know. There's I, only you can't, one you can't man really explain it. in the world <laughs> who can do this. And he's sitting in my studio right now. Because the way I explain it to our young athletes, I said the front step is the step that I like the most. You know, I feel like yeah. it's a big tire carrier uh, of technique where the tire is presented in front of you. It's yeah. basically a slide and a push, and the changer can track those lug nuts the whole time. Mm-hmm. The swinger, I call that the little man's um, carrying style. You know, mm-hmm. they're a little bit smaller in stature, and they use that momentum and that speed to get that tire in there. Sure. You know, but they're coming from so far away, it almost like scared your changes when you stuck it really hard because it was like a surprise. Like, it wasn't there, and then boom, mm-hmm. you couldn't track it. So I was never a, a big uh, proponent of that because I like the front step. But then when I tried the Brad Rodex, I'm like, I don't know what this is. I, I, I don't know who it favors, but unless I'm six foot two, however tall you are, 270 pounds, however much you weigh, I guess you can't do this, you know? So everybody I knew tempted it. What, Cam, give me your perception. Give me your perspective on this. I, I've tried it. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. Like I said, uh, I kind of glad I retired as a Jackman, not as a Jackman carrier. Um, but but what Brad was uh, talking about when we when we first went to the five man, our biggest delay was the setup time from jacking to setting up to the tire and then indexing it. And with the way Brad carries, uh, that eliminates that setup time. It's all one fluid motion. Um, it's not all the time as dramatic as like as like yourself when you used to throw them on there and they could hear it at home <laughs> hitting the hat. Um, it's it's not that, um, but it eliminates all that setup time. Mm. So in in our eyes, and, and, and still to this day, we feel like that that's the quickest way for a, a Brad carrying uh, to close that window up. Awesome. You and know, it's worked out pretty good. I want to – I want to shift gears here, and I want to touch on an incident that happened in Dover. You know, it's something that we can all relate to. You know, we're in high-pressure situations, and we're held to a meticulous standard. You know, we work in tenths of a second, and when you're running up front, you know, the mistakes and the little hiccups that you have during a race are magnified times 10. 
So that happened with the 19. And I'm going to show you all this. You know, if we can just play the, uh, the Lee clip. Lee Cunningham, a former guest on our show, you know, you'll see him as they come in first, and you don't even see them on the screen yet on the right because they were in that 41st pit stall. They were in the first pit stall, and they are competing with the second-place car, Kyle Larson, in the uh, 42 car. And as you see, Larson was pitted in pit box nine, way on the other end of the, the road, but the 19 did not have the cleanest stop. The rear changer fell and slipped on whatever the case may be, but recovered. Gun switched on him as he was hitting the lug nuts, had to re-switch it. They lost five spots on pit road. Now, with that happening, what you have to realize and how I coached my athletes was when you're running up front, it's a game of maintaining. It's not about picking up spots. And yes, the 42 car picked up spots, not because they were the faster pit crew. They picked up spots because the 19 did not maintain. That's all you have to do. You don't have to beat anybody. You just have to maintain. Very unfortunate what happened to Lee, but I don't think the justice was given or the credit was given due to the way he handled that situation. Being able to get off of from a flat ground, you know, to his knees that quick, switch that gun in mid-hit and still finish the stop, they finished second place. I feel like if you didn't have an experienced veteran there, you know, in the chase, mm -hmm. you would have finished 10th. 11th, 12th, who knows what happens. So that's the advantage to having veteran, experienced athletes on the Chase Cup car. Wouldn't you agree? You wouldn't put any of your RD guys on a Cup car, would you? No, um, but you hit the nail on the head there when you said uh, maintain. Uh, we preach that a lot in, in all my practices. It's uh, maintain or gain um, is, is the key. Um, and the way pit road is now, the top 10, top 15 <laughs> crews on pit road is within a tenth of a second. So one little slip up like that, and it's going to it's gonna amplify like that, you know, losing five spots. Not even just that slip up, qualifying. And I, don't, I can't remember where the 19 qualified, if they just won at that pit box or whatever the case may be, but they picked the last pit box. Now, I remember back in the days when that was an advantage at Richmond. Right or Loudon, but I've never known that box to be an advantage at Dover. The the only advantage there is it's clean in, so the yes. driver can get it straight. Um, yeah. So yeah. That, I, that that's a huge advantage uh, to a driver being able to park on the sign now with the the five man thing. Well, you would know that because yeah. I feel like that was a big contributor to your success as a killer B because Matt Kenseth was one of the best yes, sir. at hitting that sign on pit road, just like Kyle Busch is now. Mm -hmm. But Matt Kenseth, I mean, it was almost unfair. I felt like y'all were cheating because I sometimes I was just so mad. Like, they're not even that good. They just got Matt Kenseth, <laughs> you know, because when we were pit by y'all, you know, and I was, I was like, ah, it's going to be a long day. Killer bees are four stars back. You know, they're going to whoop our butt on pit road. And it was a lot to do with your driver Absolutely. and not really y'all OG goatness. I can say uh, that. No, we still left you sitting on the <laughs> You did. He did. And hey, well, I'm having some fun here, but the killer bees in the back in the day, if you don't know any better, you just YouTube or Google search Matt Kenseth killer bees on YouTube and you'll see all the accolades that this man has won and has been a part of. Name your teammates on your original Killer Bees, your most successful Killer Bees pit crew. Uh, Justin Austed was a front tire changer. Uh, Dave Smith was a rear tire changer. Uh, um, Jason Binger was a mm. tire carrier. And Greg Ebert was the gas man. And Dave McDonald was the second can. There's about three of those names that should be on the pit crew Hall of Fame when it starts next year. There should be. You know, yeah. when the Pit Crew Hall of Fame starts next year, when it starts next year, NASCAR, <laughs> you know, there's some names there. Anyways, hey, we have Brad Robinson and Cameron Cobb, a.k.a. OG Goatness, in the house, and we got the Brad Rodex. Stay tuned. We have our Clutch Coffee Performance of the Week coming up next. Did you know that banks collected over $15 billion in unnecessary bank fees last year? Come on, enough is enough. It's time we took back control of our finances. That's why Moneyline is proud to bring you the financial crew chief and to be a NASCAR sponsor. Look, no one knows more about hard work and pursuing their dreams than NASCAR fans, drivers, and teams. So we want to bring you the kind of banking that the big banks would never build, with features like zero fee checking and zero fee investment accounts. And because life is also meant for a join, with Money Lion, NASCAR fans get even more. We're giving away 1,500 NASCAR tickets to our members this year. Plus, you can get 5% cash back on NASCAR tickets at track purchases and all purchases at NASCAR.com. Learn more at MoneyLion.com or download our app. 
This is America's most powerful financial membership, Moneyline. Here we roar. Here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules Tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. Man, I thought it was maybe 20 or 30 if you would have asked me, but 75, that's years. <laughs> it's a big deal. It's a big day for us. One of the things we looked at was that, you know, as you, it's a long season, you know, it's a 38-week circuit and you're working and, and most of the ideology was as we get toward the end, we'll kind of lighten the load a little bit to keep everybody fresh. This year we've changed it. We're like, we're going to work just as hard as we did in the off season. And it's 10 weeks, everything you got, and we'll take all the time off in the world in the off season, but we're going to give it 100%. So, I mean, it, super emotional day. Dover's the race where we've knocked ourselves out of the chase like twice, both being picked through accidents. So to come back here at a place that had been trouble for us and to win, it's, it's a, it's, you know, I tip my hat to everybody, man. It's a great effort. Uh, it's pretty special, especially to be here at Dover. Dover's a place that I think everybody would like to win at, you know. Um, but we've been really strong here, and being in the round of 12, uh, race prior to Talladega is even more special just because you, you know that you got to go in there and you can breathe a little bit easier. So uh, pretty special to come here. Really special to win that race because of our performance on pit road more than anything. We just we needed to take care of our car but still build the lead behind us because we knew that when we caught the, the cars that were on the end of the lead lap that it was going to be tough. And, you know, Martin chiseled away quite a bit of that lead there at the end. But, you know, I think Kyle was just being smart. We were trying to keep the front tires on it and not put ourselves in a bad position and, you know, keep, keep control of the race. I think the next two weeks you're trying to you're trying to get bonus points, you're trying to get wins and try to close the gap to some of those guys that have five, six wins and lots of bonus points going into the next stage, you know. So we just gotta focus and, and take something take cars that are quicker every week and work on execution and you know come out of the next two weeks even you know with strong finishes or bonus point stage wins and potentially race wins um, and try to close that gap going into that last stage. Welcome back to Clutch Coffee Bar, Clutch Performance Award winners. The number 42 car of Kyle Larson. 75 wins since their last race. I was excited to see them in victory lane. Shouts out to my boy Mike Metcalf Jr., the fuel man. Phil Foster, former guest of ours on the show. Tire carrier Shane Wilson at the Jack. Michael Roberts, rear tire carrier. And Steve Price, a former guest as well as the front tire changer. Congratulations, guys, you know, for your Great performance and your victory at Dover at the Monster Miles. So they will be receiving their Miles trophy. Did any of y'all have a Miles? You ever won at Dover at all? You have? Yeah. How many you got? About 30? No, uh, I've only <laughs> got uh, one trophy, but I got two wins. Two wins there? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. You haven't won at Dover yet? Nope. Not yet. Maybe you'll do it with your new driver. Maybe. Whoever that is. You know, I heard Danica was coming. But it wasn't Danica. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you know, the 42, they won that, you know, for the simple fact of the matter, they didn't beat anybody off pit road. They just stayed in their lane. You know, they did what they were supposed to do. They performed their job. You know, they got their – they left the same position that their car came in. That's all you can ask for a pit crew. You know, that's all we can do as athletes. Brad, I wanted to talk – Your, if you were to describe yourself as a jackman, what are some of your strengths and the few weaknesses that you have, if any – that makes you an elite jack man. So one of my things that I, I kind of focus on, I've been focusing on, especially now that I'm getting older and uh, and and hopefully more veteran life. Twenty four is old. Uh, you know, I, I yeah, I wish. <laughs> so I, I, I figure out, you know, during the week what my what my one hundred percent is, fast mm. as I can go. And then I've basically made a deal with myself. All right, if I, you know, as fast as I can go is this. I like it to back it down to about 90% because I feel like that's plenty fast enough to do good, solid pit stops. And I can control that. I can control 90%. So that allows me to be consistent. And as a jackman and a carrier, that's really all you can ask for. I don't feel like jackman or carriers really depict the, the, the speed of the pit stop. You know, the tire changers do. So by just being solid, being clean, 
and being 90%, like I say, um, you know, then then you basically leave it in the changer's hands to do fast pit stop. Well said. I believe that you can't speed a stop up, but you damn sure can slow it down. That's right. That's <laughs> in, your, in your position, you sure can slow it down. Have there ever been a need for you to push it to 100%? Is that situational? No, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes when, say, a front changer gets done, you know, uh, a little bit early and, and you can maybe you got a free lane getting around the car and you can pick up maybe a little bit of time getting around the car. But other than that, I, th- I think it's just about being solid, you know, being clean. If you try to go 100 percent, 110 percent, sometimes people say, I think that that's just crazy. You know what I mean? Because that's when you're asking for mistakes. Um, you just really need to be solid. You need to be disciplined. You need to be clean and consistent. And mm-hmm. that's what's going to allow you to have a long career in the sport. About you, Cameron. You know, as a Jackman, pros and cons. And then, are you excited about the young talent that you are being exposed to at Roush? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, As a Jackman, I just tried to do the same thing over and over and over. I wasn't the the fastest or the strongest or any of that. I I killed him with uh, being the exact same, giving my tire changers the same look. Like Brad said, you know, the tire changers depict the, the speed of the pit stop. So if I gave them the same look every time, they could they could do their job. Um, the the talent pool that we've got coming up now, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun working <laughs> with these young kids. Uh, me and Brad are both learning the new generation. Uh, that we're lingo, learning, the millennials. Yeah, oh, we're God. learning that. We're learning that. Um, They're doomed. Yeah, they They're are. Doomed. Trying they to are, co- but, trying to coach uh, a millennial. You know, I always prided myself. Tough. I used to be like, because I'm right in the middle, but I was like, gosh, these guys need some work oh it's it's tough we we <laughs> spend a lot of time with life skills um <laughs> but no the 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 talent and the young kids and, and the dedication that they put in uh it, it's fun uh i enjoy every morning practice uh you know going out there and watching these kids try to to do their best and to get to that next level mm-hmm. um, it, it's 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 the funnest part of our, my job absolutely well there you have it Ladies and gentlemen, athletes and fans, Brad and Cameron. Roush Fenway Racing representing. They're doing big things in the sport. They're touching a lot of athletes, and they're putting a lot of athletes in position to be successful. Thank you guys for joining us on MRN Crew Call, and um, good luck in Talladega this week at the Dega. Hope you all avoid the big big one. one. (laughs) Thank you. I won't see you all down there, but I'll be watching. All right.